very good morning and a warm welcome from dakshin chitra heritage museum chennai uh, this talk by theodore baskaran is organized as part of our madras week celebrations we have an exhibition ongoing exhibition uh, sri ram spoke about uh, restoration and buildings heritage buildings of chennai and uh, chennai or madras as you all know is known for cinema cinema crazy about uh, the uh, actors heroes and uh, the theaters i grew up in the 80s and i still remember uh, you know um, enthusiastically all family would book and go to devi paradise and the other safiya theater and all that and the hoardings who can forget okay. the hoardings in uh, madras the banners which were put up in mount road so uh, uh, we thought theodore is one person who has done um, a lot of research written a lot of very very interesting books on tamil cinema in particular and uh, about theodore baskaran he is very well known in tamil nadu he is a film historian and he is a wildlife conservationist uh, and his whole family is interested in nature wildlife and all that and i think that's how theodore uh, though he was in the civil service he was able to manage weekends you know traveling and all that if the family wasn't uh, interested in the same areas that he was it would have been a little difficult but we always wonder how theodore does so many things uh, he continues to do recently there were two books one on indian dogs uh, dogs and the other one i forget but right now he's translated another book uh, so he's continuously evolving and working and um, uh, his famous uh, two very famous books on cinema one was essays of cinema compiled the message bearers which was uh, published in 1981 uh, is a very well known book and the second and another book serpent Eye of the Serpent is one of the most famous books, and it won the Golden Swarna Kamal Award. Uh, Swarna Kamal Award. It's a national award for uh, the best book on cinema, which was in 1997. And he has uh, held several important positions uh, in the field of cinema. He was even jury for National Film Awards, and many many things. We can go on about Theodore's contribution to literature, uh, films, and uh, environment uh, issues and uh, lots of things about the planet and uh, we are very happy to have theodor uh, once again last year also we had invited him uh, to speak on something and i know theodor thank you so very much we really appreciate your time zoom talk is not just about zoom talk you need to sit and prepare a uh, powerpoint you have to you know spend your time uh, take the sources from take images from various sources put them together i know it's a task but we really thank you and appreciate you and uh, this uh, subject is very close to madras people and uh, welcome we welcome you once again and uh, i this is theodore baskaran for all of you the title is chennai the cradle of south indian cinema thank you theodore thank you very much <laughs> uh let me tell you straight away i how happy i am Uh, to be talking from this platform uh, on a topic that's close to my heart i want to talk about how chennai by certain historical circumstances became the capital of south indian cinema and what were the influences at work and how did it affect the other cinemas in south india like telugu kannada malayalam uh, and these four mainly basically these four next moving picture that's how it was known first the word cinema came much later moving pictures appear in three cities in india Bombay, Chennai, Calcutta. Raju, these, these three cities were uh, port cities. So you know, in those days, with the film, rolls of film came in big steel boxes by ship, and they arrived in Bombay, Chennai, Calcutta. So the port cities were the first to receive cinema. next please and in madras 
one uh, um, Edwards from France screens what he called kinemascope in the Victoria Public Hall. Now it is very much in uh, discussion because there is this, uh, our new chief minister has taken this idea of renovating it to art and the, the talks about renovation is going on. But this is where in 1897, the first cinema house, cinema uh, show in South India was uh, held and it was, it had a get money. Imagine just two years after cinema was shown in Paris by Lumia Brothers, within two years it comes to India and it was screened. Uh, he, he had just brought a few short films, uh, pro probably uh, 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 films like The Arrival of Train, um, you know, fil short films that are known to uh, film historians uh, coming out of the factory. These 10 minute long short films were screened in Victoria Public Hall. Victoria Public Hall, of course, is, uh, uh, has got its place in history for many, many other reasons also. <laughs> How did this come about? What was the effect on the other languages? And uh, other language films produced here. You see, from 1897, when the first film was screened, up to 1960, uh, Chennai was the capital of film industry in the South. Most of the films, not all, most of the films of South Indian languages were made here. And uh, after that, you know, um, studios come up in uh, uh, Bangalore, Mysore, and uh, Trivandrum, other places, Hyderabad particularly, and things change. Next, please. Now, from 1897 to 1900, that's about 13, 14 years, films were screened in Madras. <laughs> in rented buildings, roadside sheds, and in tents in various various parts of Chennai. You see, these films were shown and people went there as a curiosity to see moving pictures. Nobody was conscious of that they were witnessing the birth of a cultural colossus. And neither the government nor the uh, others who were interested in entertainment took notice of it was cross, shown as told in some roadside shades and small rented buildings. But this, uh, these shows became popular, the short films. And there were entrepreneurs watching this, that there is a newfangled medium that has come and it's attracting people. So what's the next step? Next, please. Next uh, slide, please. Okay, there's a small uh, diversion. Three as there are three aspects of film industry. We have to keep in mind production, projection, distribution. Now, in South India, in Madras, and in other parts of Tamil Nadu, it was projection which came. That is, some people got little short films and projected it. It happened in Trichy, it happened in Coimbatore, before uh, they started producing films. The distribution was happening simultaneously because there were Indian entrepreneurs who imported uh, Western films and were screening it. Three aspects of film industry took root in 
uh, Madras. Next slide, please. Okay, this I am. This is one of the pioneer exhibitors, Swami Kano Vincent of Coimbatore. His company was names Edison Cinematograph. See, he was uh, uh, he was working in the railways, and uh, in Trichy, he runs into a, a French exhibitor who was returning from Sri Lanka with some short films and a projector. And Vincent talks to him and finds out this fascinating possibility and asks him, will he sell that equipment and films? Yeah. Um, he buys it. The story goes that he, he pawned his wife's jewels and bought it and began his Edison cinematograph. Amazing story that he started showing it to Trichy in a tent near St. Joseph's Hall, made money and traveled. You know, he traveled to Burma and North, he traveled up to Peshawar with his uh, box of films and a projector. And then he comes back and in uh, uh, Coimbatore, he builds this uh, well-known lighthouse theater. Uh, now, now there is, in that place, there is, a, I'm told there is an apartment complex called Lighthouse. And he also produced uh, four Tamil films um, in the early years, sound films. Next, please. Okay, now this is the first ever built cinema house in South India. It was called the Electric Theatre and it was built by a British uh, entrepreneur called Warwick Major. It still stands. That's the happy news. It still stands next to the PMG's office in Madras. And uh, he, it, there was a gala uh, function to inaugurate it. Uh, a British magazine describes it. And they had uh, film screenings. Uh, in, a, in a few years, uh, about 10 years later, an Indian businessman, Venkaya, he was a photographer, he had a studio. See the close relationship between photography and cinema. And he builds Gaiti Theatre. And two or three theatres come up and uh, short films uh, or screen. Next, please. Okay, this is Nataraja Mudalia, who went unsung and unhonored. He was the man who built the first studio in Madras, first, first film producer. And the studio, he called it India Film Company. Mind you, this was the time of the freedom struggle, just gaining momentum. And all the films that were screened were imported, American and uh, uh, British. They were called uh, Empire Films. Nataraja Mulyar watches it. Amazing guy. And he decides to make films. So he goes and gets trained with a government filmmaker in Pune, buys a camera and comes and sets up his company, called it India Film Company, as different from the foreign companies. Uh, even in the word go, cinema was associated with nationalist movement, which is a separate story, I won't go into that, but Nataraja Mudalyar produces his Kichagavada, which is an episode from Mahabharata. See, he saw that films were made out of uh, biblical stories. So that gave him an idea. And also, Dada Sahib Falke had made Harish Chandra. So, Natrajan Mudriyar gets the idea from Mahabharata and Kichgavadam is made 
And as you know, at that time, the major source of entertainment was drama. So many drama companies from Pamal Samadamulia group act in his, uh, in his films. Now that was only, see, the, when we are talking about films, they were not like the switch films of today. They were only 600 feet on long strip. And even that was shown with uh, short intervals because they were using one projector and they were, they were not using electric lamp that comes later. Uh, they were, most of them were using magnesium lamp. So the projector got heated. So they had to give rest to the projector. So they will stop and let the projector cool. So what do you do at that time? There is a dance in the stage. Not only dance, there were also boxing matches. And there were stars in that boxing match. Gunboat Jack, for example, who was a very famous wrestler, was often featured in the cinema houses in boxing bouts. Now, I think this is a, the habit of adding extraneous entertainment forms other than the main narration of the film comes. Just as in human life, uh, how childhood affects the adult, I think a silent era affects that cinema unless a filmmaker consciously tries to get out of this and make new kinds of films, which they are doing now. Next, please. Oh, this is the kind of uh, camera that Nataraja Mugler used. It, it was hand crank. They put it on a stand and hand crank, hand crank to be 16 frames a second. So it has to be evenly done. Now the films that we see, or we were seeing till recently, when they were using films, 24 frames per second. But the silent, it was 16 frames per second. That's why when you see a silent movie, which has not been restored, like the early Charlie Chaplin, you will see the figure, characters moving with jerks. There is an interesting essay. I saw the camera that Nataraja Mudlar used. You know mm -hmm. where? I saw it in Tanjavur Museum in 1974. But, and it also had some films he made there. Next time when I go, went there, the camera was not there and nobody knew anything about Nataraja Mudlar's camera. I don't know if it was stolen, like the, like branches are getting stolen. But in any case, we do not have any memorabilia from Natarajan Madhya's days. Next, please. Okay, now after Natarajan Madhya started his studio, others came in. And the man on the right, uh, left, First, he is uh, R. Padmanabhan, who was a lawyer. You know, the educated people started getting into films. Uh, his claim to fame is he made a number of uh, full-length movies. And his, one of the persons he trained was K. Subramanian, who later became a major figure in Indian cinema, who made movies like Jagabhumi and had a big studio, uh, which was sold to Arsene and was renamed uh, Germany Studio. Madras United Artists Corporation was bought by Vasan and it became Germany Studio. And the next person you see here is Raja Sandu, a remarkable man who even in the silent era went to Bombay because he was a Sandu, you see. So, uh, 
showing like with weightlifting and gymnastics was a part of the entertainment. They had shows and had get money. So he went to Bombay. While he was doing this, he was signed up for a film. And he acted with big stars of that period, my Gohar. He acted with uh, stars, you know, the stars in Bombay stars like Gohar. <coughs> then he comes to Madras and start making Tamil films. Uh, yeah. So now these studios were the schools for filmmaking. Many well-known names of later years were trained here. For example, Y.V. Rao, that's our present actor, Lakshmi's father, uh, was trained with uh, R. Padunab. The trouble is that we have very little information about this period, but it's an, the happy news is now there are youngsters uh, trying to research into this, like Mutuvel, uh, Sugi. Uh, they are uh, trying to kind of excavate and come up with information, and they are doing great work. Next slide, please. If you ask me to name one person as the founder of South Indian cinema, I would name A. Narayan. A. Narayan, the man who is sitting, who is astride a horse and supervising shooting, was a graduate of uh, Presidency College. And he became a distributor. That is, he used to buy, he used to take Indian films. You know, Hindi films made in Bombay, like Anarchy, traveled all the way to U.S. and tried to sell these films, you know. And there he got to know people like Barrymore, Carl Lemle, you know, doyens of Hollywood cinema. In fact, Barrymore comes much later to visit Narayana in Madras. Now this GPC, General Pictures, Pictures Corporation, was a real big school for directors and film cinematographers to work there. Jit and Banerjee worked there. Serkaratu Sama was there. Many such actors. And Narayanan was, was a very creative person. A Narayanan of GPC. Yeah, next please. There he is with his wife. Now his wife, Meenachi, was a sound recordist. Now, now we are moving into the sound era. During the silent era, in the silent era, more than a hundred films were made in Madras. We are now talking about only Madras. So, but some films were made in Mysore. There was one made in but just in Madras, my collection, my research shows more than a hundred films were made, but not a single one remains because of many reasons. One is climate and nobody uh, thought of uh, preserving them. Okay, we now go, come into silent era. Sound comes to India in 1931, as you know, with the film, Hindi film, Alam Ara. But between, up to 1934, we did not have any facility in Madras to make sound movies. But NRNN was still very active. Sets up a studio called Srinivasa Sinito. Srinivasan was his son. It's named after him. Srinivasa Sinito. In those days, when they set up sound studios, they always added this uh, suffix Sinito to show that it's a sound. Meenachi Sinito. So, and they make the first uh, uh, 
sound film in Madras. It is Srinivasa Kalyan. Now, Meenachi, his wife, learned sound technique and she was the first sound recordist, female sound recordist in uh, South India and she goes on to be a sound recordist in a number of films produced by Srinivasa Sinitu. Yeah, next please. Okay, then <coughs> number of studios come up in Madras. See, war, after war broke out, uh, number of businessmen working in uh, uh, Burma and uh, Malish, Malaya, they collected all their valuables and came to the mainland, came to India. And film industry was a readily available source to invest their money. Not much of accounting was asked for. So, particularly Nagaratar community, a number of them went into cinema and A.V. Mayor Chetia starts his famous uh, AVM studios and comes up with uh, films like Namiru. You see <coughs> uh, Kumari Kamala dancing. Kumari Kamala happily is still with us. She runs a dance school in uh, New York. This is the uh, famous drum dance, Kottu Murase. Is she is dancing for Bharati song. Incidentally, this drum dance was the precursor to the famous drum dance of Chandraleka. Next, please. And uh, as I told you about K. Subramaniam, who had this. United Artists Corporation, United Artists Corporation. And he runs into loss and he sells it to who was then distributing films and also running Anandivya. Vasan was not very keen on buying the studio. But once he decides, he buys the studio and it became a very famous Film producing center, and he produces films like Avaya, uh, Chandraleka. And this is a sequence from Avaya. I'm sure you can recognize K.B. Sundarambar, who incidentally was the first film artist to enter legislature. That also happens in Madras. 1958, she becomes the upper house member, the first film artist to get into legislature. Next, please. Okay, then Vijaya Vagini Studio, which was one first Vagini, then Vijaya, they merge, and this studio comes into being in uh, Madras. It was a phenomenally large studio considered the largest in Asia, it had 13 floors. That is, 13 shooting can go on at a time. And they produce some very memorable films like uh, Maya Bazaar, Badal Bayrami, still they are cult films. Next, please. When big studios were in uh, uh, Madras, what was the effect? You see, they began to produce multilingual films. That is, they'll make one film, have the same set and all that, and make the same film in another language. Like, Museum was made like that. Instead of Gemini Nation, the NTR came. And then it was also made to 
Hindi. So bilingual and trilingual films, which was a phenomenon, you know, not found in other countries, was made in Madras. Next, please. 1960s, I would say, was the height of studio era. You know, was and studio was such a big one. When people came to Madras foreign dignitaries, like Chow and Lai, they will come to Ms. Gemini studio. I mean, Vasan could just pick up the phone and talk to Jawaharlal Nehru, that kind of uh, status he had. And here he is uh, sometime in the, must be 67 or 68, um, showing the studio to Arnaud, Durai, and Karnan. Next, please. Okay. Now, we are coming to the end of studio system. Now, studios, there are more than 30 in Madras, were working like factories. Some studios, they say, worked like a family, like Gemini. But there were also problems. They did not allow the workers to unite. In fact, they were doing everything to prevent the growth of trade union among films. It's very interesting that even BD workers had trade union long time back. It was only in the 70s that film workers come as form into a union. It is a pathetic state. Uh, one writer describes it, they will, in the mornings, excuse me, in the mornings before the day work starts, a man will come to the Gemini Studio gate and he will throw a handful of plastic discs Whoever collects it, collects one, gets a job on for that day as a junior artist. So the, the, the studio barracks, they work very hard to stall the growth of trade union movement in cinema. Of course, there were no trade unions among uh, uh, the junior artists in that time. But now, every wing of the film production as unions, you know, like stunt union, dancers union, and uh, cinematographers union, makeup artists union, which is uh, a nice thing. Okay, now I was talking about the era of uh, the, the, what happened, a lot of private entrepreneurs came in at this time. Uh, they will bring a lot of money, like a doctor from Polachi will come and invest money, make a film and disappear. I have, after making it, or somebody, some other uh, uh, industrialist will come from tour and make a film and so the studios uh, disappeared and they also could not stand up to the uh, trade unions. So uh, at this time, the star At this time, the star polit stars began to arrive. You see, one reason why stardom became so big in Tamil Nadu is that in, in South India, or India, is that nobody cared for cinema or nobody cared to include cinema in the curriculum. You have a department of music 
Madras University. You don't have a department of cinema. Cinema did not deserve a serious look. That's what they thought. Gandhi despised cinema, as you know. Rajaji called it a poison. And Periyar also despised cinema. So the leaders did not encourage cinema. And the academy had neglected it. So it was in this atmosphere that cinema grows up and it turns out to be a mere entertainment uh, entertainment uh, giant. Of course, there were films that talked about political reforms like Parasakti and Bhagavad Gita. But you will notice they are also in the same entertainment format like songs and dances. Um, there were also films from the Communist Party, like Avan Amaran. But these were like streaks of lightning in a dark sky. Mainly it was uh, entertainment and that was a good ground for the star to emerge. Now people thought that if you <laughs> sign up a star, then you will have a successful film. So the stories began to be tailored to the uh, abilities or the skills of the star. <clears throat> so, and then the star goes in for star who has got a lot of popularity and power goes in for real power through the electoral process and the era of star politicians politicians begin in uh, uh, Tamil Nadu and also in uh, other parts of the country. So most of the films produced in Chennai began to have a formula. You know, I was talking about the Chennai being the center, all the artists were there, all the writers were there, all the choreographers were there, all the stunt masters were there. So the films produced here, produced here had a formula, you know, like a Talimi. It had, uh, it had fights, it had uh, uh, chase, uh, songs, dance, group dance, provision for male gaze, showing female body, everything was packed into one entertainment hall. Uh, I must say that things are changing now and we have many, uh, we, we see uh, definitely a certain big change in the Tamil screen. Next, please. The state reorganization on linguistic basis, 1956, Andhra Kerala Karnataka coming to be. Till then, the censor board was in Madras only. So everyone has to come here to get their film certified. And after the states were formed, they began to have censor board in Bangalore and Hyderabad. Right. Till then, it was Madras. Next, please. Yeah, that's it. Uh, one point that I forgot to mention was earlier. <coughs> when silent films were produced in uh, Madras, I told you there are more than uh, 120, 100 films were produced. They all had uh, titles in Telugu, Tamil, and sometimes in Hindi. Also. There was one film which even had Gujarati titles. But the silent era films, we call them Tamil films because the characters spoke Tamil. And since there was no soundtrack, what they spoke was shown in letters. 
in title cards. So the silent era cinema produced in Madras, nine, about 100, more than 100 of them are part of Tamil cinema. Just as Charlie Chaplin's films, silent films, are part of British cinema, English cinema. Just as Battleship Potemkin, the silent film of Russia, belongs to the Russian cinema. This is something that film historians should remember. So thank you very much for the time. I've exceeded my time. I will take questions now. Um, thank you very much, Theodore. Uh, we don't know so many names. We feel so ignorant that we never knew the history of uh, uh, cinema, which began uh, even before 1900s. Thank you so very much. There's so many layers to it. You And uh, very surprising to know there was a woman sound recordist and how liberal these men were in allowing their wives to take up uh, jobs in the cinema. And we only know uh, after AVM and all that, but uh, very interesting and thank you i'm sure all the participants learned so much more about uh, cinema and we can take three or four questions maximum uh, so please keep it brief and please go ahead with your questions uh, there's one uh, person in the chat asking that actors from these linguistic states make films in madras before 1956 that's one of the questions Are you? Uh, one second, one second, theater. Uh, someone is asking, uh, did actors from these linguistic states make films in Madras before 1956? Yeah, of course. Uh, before 1956, you see, even after 1956, I think uh, the 61 studio to, uh, comes up in uh, Andhra. Otherwise, earlier all the films were made in Madras. Okay. All the artists lived in Madras. Okay. The other question is, sir, can you tell us in brief about the Japan bombing episode that forced studios out of Madras? How would change the nature of cinema? I think there was only a fear about Madras being bombed by Japan. It was not bombed, but the only attack that there was on Madras by the powers, German ship Emden shelled Madras in 1914. But during the war time, the fear of attack was very real. So some studios moved. For example, Pragati Studio, the precursor of Avian moved to Devakota. Some studios closed work and during war time very few films were made. But filmmaking work continued throughout the war. Thank you. So one more question. How did unionization begin to happen finally? Uh, Bavitra, that is a separate story. Uh, and it's a long one. Uh, I can mention two names, or three names. The earliest was a man called K.S. Gopalakrishnan, not to be confused with the director, but earlier there was a K.S. Gopalakrishnan, who was a congressman. He formed a union in the 1950s, but that didn't take off. As I told you, the the, the, the studio owners were sabotaging all efforts. And then in the 1970s, M.B. Srinivasan, Himai Ghosh, Himai Ghosh who came from Calcutta and made Madras his home, they formed the union. And so, and the major uh, drawback was so uh, the, the government did not recognize cinema as an industry. Can you believe that? For a long time, 
there's only after 1980, I think, is the way. Once it's not recognized as an industry, the workers don't get any benefit. It was very common for the workers to go unpaid. Their working conditions was very poor. Uh, you know, about the cinema workers and their pathetic condition, Ashoka Mitran has written a novel titled Karain the Needle. Please read it. We only see the glamour, but behind that were these thousands of workers which were in utterly poor condition. Now they are all very well organized. So to go back to your question, uh, MBC Nivasan and Nimoy Go started it and then others picked up. Um, Congress was also uh, part of it, left parties came in and uh, some actors, they, for example, MGR gave land and a small ground for the stunt actors to train. And that is the headquarters of the stunt actors union. Brackets Modern Studios and Pakshi Raja Kovai. There's one more question. Uh, can you speak about the influence of Tamil in other industries, Tamil cinema in other industries? Tamil cinema? Influence of Tamil cinema in other industries. In, in Northern Indies? Yeah, he's, he's just, uh, you know, um, generally asking. In other industries, I don't know. Sir, who's that? It says, M. anyway. Not clear. <laughs> not clear. Yeah, we'll go to the next one. A studio called Chitrakala, built in Tirunagar, Madurai. Was any film made there, he's asking? Or was it a non-starter? A studio called Chitrakala, built in Tirunagar, Madurai. Any idea? No, I have no idea. Okay. The studio, probably yeah. some of the younger researchers will, you, will be able to say. Yeah. Okay, I think uh, otherwise generally people are thanking you for the interesting talk and uh, yes anything else uh, one more question on the yeah. chat ah okay can you uh can you gauge the role of ellis duncan on the trick leap in the tamil film industry yeah uh he's one of my favorite characters in uh, tamil film history he made uh, number of films was here for 15 years. Uh, what he did was he brought out, he brought into Tamil cinema a style of storytelling which I would call the Hollywood style. That is a uh, lot of outdoor shots and camera movement Earlier the camera was static, you know. He moved the camera and moved the camera. He had uh, he made a wooden railing, which is still called Duncan railing. So uh, he also made a kind of a net mask for close-up, which is called Duncan mask now. Duncan was a major influence. He brought in this. Uh, Hollywood style, but unfortunately, the Hollywood style did not catch up. The usual uh, Madras style came in like a wave and smothered it. But people like Ramna, who made this great film called Yale Padum Padu, Mani Dan, uh, Kada Nai, he, he followed Bailey's or Duncan's style. Uh, Duncan uh, made this great film, Mira. You know. If you should see it, uh, how he tells the story. Um, he has written his biography. So some of Adventures in the Making, some of, if you want to know more about it, you can read that. Uh, there was a documentary on Duncan and we even screened it at Dakshin Chitra a few years ago. Uh, 
uh, R. V. Ramani had did the cinematography. It's a beautiful film on Duncan's, uh, uh, you know, uh, association with uh, cinema and his filmmaking and all that. Yeah. Now mm -hmm. that film is titled American in Madras. Ah, yes, correct. And it's on YouTube. Oh, okay, great. So you yeah. can watch it on YouTube. It's uh, a great. It was a fantastic documentary. Very well yeah. made. It's a model documentary. Yes, yes. So we, uh, we I, I remember that. Now that you're talking about it, it's already in YouTube. Probably people who are interested can watch that. One last question: Where can we access archival information on Tamil film history? Any films or books? They're asking you to suggest. Archival information on in Tamil film industry. I feel very self-conscious to talk about this. Because it's your books that they can refer to. <laughs> you can definitely go back to Eye of the Serpent. <laughs> the other books he has is the, uh, written one on... There, is, there are also, I tell you, other books. Tornavel is a filmmaker and the unusual person who made it from the from Pune Film Institute to Michigan University is a professor there. Now he has written a book called Madras Studios. You can read that. And uh, what are the other books? Telluloid Classicist is a book by Hare Krishna, published from uh, Berkeley. That's another book. Okay, I think you've kindled the interest uh, in many of us to know more about uh, uh, cinema. That's a great thing. And that's how a lot of young researchers uh, come into the picture. Um, thank you, Theodore. Thank you for this uh, wonderful session on Tamil cinema. Uh, hope to meet you again and uh, thank you all the participants who joined us this morning. Thank you, Geeta. It was a pleasure to have you as always and uh, good luck.